Hi, afternoon all. How are we doing today? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Ms. Bullard, um, for me to tell you how interesting the day is, I would have to actually pay you and take up a lot more of your time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, do you all have good days ever? Like, I'm just asking, is there ever a good day? Because you always give me the doom and gloom report every, every class. Is there any time then we, that we have a good day and we are relaxed and you know, ready to take on the world. Any of those things happened recently? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I have them in the day, but after five o'clock sometimes, Lord knows what has happened in the branch. So it, it, that, is, that does have a lot to do with my day being sucky. Okay. But there's always that dump truck moment. There's always yeah. that. I'm yeah. sure all of us have experienced yeah, right, but like this, would you make it that you can let the dump truck determine your entire day? You should Not, just, you should choose happy. Like I had a dump truck moment. Oh well, I choose to be happy. You know. Oh, I, I'm good now. I'm good. Uh, the thing is, it yeah. just it takes a minute or two just to focus, just just to refocus. Just takes a minute or two. I had yeah, a, you have to unwind first. Yeah, I had a dumb truck moment, but I say, devil, not today. Child, I, I shake that right off. I didn't even carry that home with me. But very good. Very, very good. Because people could be people, trust me. And if you let them continuously get to you, you will always be low. Yes, correct, correct. And I, I don't know if I shared this with you, but I listened to Les Brown the other day, and he said 89% are thoughts are negative. And so, especially if something happens, we tend to take, you know, overthink it and rehearse it in our head a million times and then think the worst. So try to program yourself to, you know, have positive thoughts and even when things go wrong, you know, deal with it and then try to let it go. And it's not easy as what I'm saying, but if you practice it, you know, eventually you become, but you, you practice or, you know, remember I always say if you, when you 15, 16, you're trying to learn how to drive, Eventually, by 18, 19, you become a good driver, right? Yeah. So it's the same way. Yeah. So Not for everybody. <laughs> well, hopefully, for the most part. Yeah. yeah. So good. So I, I hope oh, that. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, a little di divulging off of the topic, but I sat in a um, Toastmasters meeting, so I want to discuss that for my 5%. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Way to go. Way to okay, go. Okay, and, and that's part. exactly what I was going to start with. Just we, ask, we, we have basically um, one more class where we're going to um, cover the chapters. Then we have the presentations, and then we have review, and then that says the final exam on the 13th. So I would hope that everything that we've gone through so far um, you know, you were able to retain some of it. You can go back and do a review and, you know, everybody be successful. But, um, you know, I'm concerned. Did I not say um, last week or that we will only cover what we didn't cover on the midterm and perhaps some stuff on chapter one? Did I say that last week? No, ma'am. I know you said oh. that we would deal with the types of controls today. No, I'm talking about for the final exam. Didn't I say we would only cover certain chapters for the final exam? I think oh, it's five, six, six, ten, six. and I think two and seven, I think. Right, right. So yeah, only what we seven. haven't covered. Right. So yeah. everything after the midterm, but would be ten, five, six, two, and seven. Yeah. Okay. I don't see the person on, so I'll wait. Wait to go back over that. So somebody, everybody is clear that, you know. Um, those are the chapters what we have already been tested on, we've been tested, and that's it. Okay, very good. Okay, so go ahead. Um, anybody, this is you know, if you want to get your five percent, let me know. Um, again, we aim to be short and sweet because all of our
classes have been um, comprehensive and we're winding down. So after the 5%, um, I want everybody to give me an update on where they are with their mentoring presentation, just to ensure that everybody is, you know, on track to completing it and emailing it the Sunday before, which would be the 28th and being ready to um, present. So I want everybody just to give me an overview of who they chose and why, and then we'll get into chapter six and hopefully be finished by um, seven. Sounds good, um, Cold Brook? Sounds wonderful. Well, right, good, good. Okay, so go, go ahead, let, let us know about your meeting. Okay, I was it supposed to be an essay form or you just need just an overview of it? Because yeah, I just an talk. overview. Just an overview. Okay, so I I gone on the Zoom meeting. It was Fidelity's Toastmasters. So the topic was focus over attention. So everybody in the meeting, they had an opportunity to to like explain what, what's the meaning of like what's their meaning of what it does it mean to them to be focus and then it was i forget the lady's name she did a speech it was how i guess it was how um because this is my first time in toastmaster so it was all new to me it was her i guess evening to you know present and she 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 presented a speech on focus pay attention and focus so that's basically what her speech was on and it was very engaging she had um pointers as to like she well first she defined what is um focus. She used a lot of figurative language, figurative speech, and then after her speech, everybody had a session to critique it. So it was more or less like they had like orders, so they had to be like Madam Chair and you know. So it was it was it was short. <laughs> Okay, so what was their word for the day? The Toastmasters normally they have a word for the day. I didn't. I don't remember that. Okay, so did you take your, the opportunity to network, introduce yourself? Or? Well, when they let me and they yeah, it was like they asked me my name and who invited me, and I told them who invited me, one of my coworkers. So. That was my time. That's, that was basically it. I actually came in when they were introducing the speaker. So it wasn't that long for me to introduce myself. Okay, but you found it beneficial? It was. It was. I actually want to join it because it helps with your um, confidence in speaking. That's how it seems. Right, right. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so very good. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I also attended a Toastmasters one. Um, I wrote down information. My one was like, I felt like it was, oh gee, I forget the name. It was like kind of boring to me. Um, it was Toastmasters Club um, 7178. This was the Cancer, Cancer, Cancer Society was the venue, but I was on like the Zoom. Right. Um, I had a friend who let, who um, who sent me the, the link. So the information I wrote down for it because it wasn't it wasn't that long. So not really, it wasn't it seemed to be that long to me. I see an hour, I think an hour and a half it was. Um, like they introduced like all the guests and all that stuff. The theme was it's a cold world. Um, they had like two or three speakers. I remember two of the speakers, um, Mr. Trevor Lockhart, he spoke. Um, it was it was okay. I mean, nothing like you know, interest like interesting <laughs> to me. Um, I wrote down like some of the little announcements, like because I know they was announcing that someone, um, but this lady, I think Carrie announced that she had smash cakes available, and someone else was talking about um raffle, um sorry raffle ticket sales. Um, okay, but what was the topic? Home. What was the topic about? It's a cold world. Okay, what does that mean? What was the discussion about? One of the, it was two, two persons who presented. Um, what the, hold on, I write the people name down. One of the person name was Mr. Lockhart. I think he, I think it was him who presented because I wrote down a couple different people because someone did like a, um, what they call it, an icebreaker. 
Yeah. Okay. But what iceberg. was the discussion I, I about? The iceberg. Go ahead. What was the discussion about? What is a cold world? I mean, like, what, what did they discuss? It was like, okay, so this, they started off because this, first of all, this was like from the, from the end of um, January. So I can't even remember like the whole, whole thing. I thought he's presenting right then. So I, um, so I transferred if I you know, go to another one this week and then bring you up to date. But that's information I write down. But I do remember uh, they, the, the topic was, I write that part down. It's a cold world. Um, and then I know he started off, he started off with a story, the guy. But you can't remember the story. No, but I know, I can't remember the story. Okay, Tanisha, started... what was your discussion about Tanisha? Yeah, because I can't remember. Me? It, it was yeah, not what was What did they discuss? focus over attention so she she had an it was a speech more or less and like I say she used different like figurative language and she just it was her definition how I could explain it the way she presented it was just like her way her interpretation of what does it mean to um to be focused over attention so yeah so she was she was saying that focus is different than actually having someone's attention, being focused. Okay, so you say you were gonna go back, right? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to go back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the whole point of this is to network, right? So you need to introduce yourself and talk to actually talk to the people there and and, and tell them you, you know why you were there to network. And to meet new persons and you know for corporate development and what have you and then you have to pay attention so you could come back and give us an overview as to what the discussion was okay. every toastmasters meeting there's a word of the day you have to bring yeah, well, back remember to... i'm even saying the word of the day okay so next time when you go pay attention because I, I i don't want to just give you five um five percent and you don't you don't even know what the discussion was based on. I gotta listen to that. Right, and, and the whole, as, as you become supervisors and, and you go out to various meetings, sometimes these meetings, of course, like if you go to a seminar, there's a charge involved or it's from the regulator. You can't send the entire bank. So one person has to go out, take notes and come back and you know disseminate the information to the organization or share it with their staff if you're a supervisor. So, mm -hmm. so you have to pay attention. And you have to be able to explain yourself when you get back. Okay. And okay. Miss Frazier, I didn't went to two of the meetings. God, I Miss Frazier. This is Bullet. Oh, oh sorry, Miss Bullet. I went to two of the meetings. But I can't, I, I know that I, I didn't write all information down. This I just got invited the second time. Okay. Okay. Now, so. that one, but that one was a little, I should talk about that one. That one was a little better because I know the whole presentation was the person who presented. I know what he was talking about. He was talking about um, what he said find your pool which, which almost mean like find your happiness um when he talked about i the, the name of the person presented was he was a band mr banner bean he discussed i still don't know the word of the day so i go you know um but i know he just his, his topic was find your pool and in the his story he talked about his daughter um he said how he took his daughter him and his daughter was on this line um during covid no no he started the story saying that she he was he was babysitting or something like that and um, she saw this, he was calling her and he realized that she saw this pool on the TV, right? She's watching TV and it had her attention. And so he had to go buy this, we talk about this now, he had to go buy this pool. So we talked about how he had to stand on the line to Kelly to buy this pool. And, um, you know, he had to stand on the line for like, like three, four hours. And then he was able to get this pool for his daughter. And he just talk about how like we have to make, like I say, find your pool, find the little happiness that we had and it's, um, during COVID and basically, basically it's finding your happiness. That's what it really was about. But this, this wasn't the same um, Toastmasters, it was the second one. That one was okay. a little more interesting, but I didn't know they have a word of the day. I don't know when they say it because I don't recall them saying the word of the day for any of the ones I was to. I don't know at what point they say that. Okay, but you said that you can attend another one or no? Well, if you need me to attend the next one. No, I mean, I just want, I don't, again, <laughs> I don't need you to attend it. The whole point of, you know, we want to do it properly. We don't want to just say, we show up. Okay, we've been to the meeting. We didn't participate. We didn't meet anybody. 
and we don't can't give a proper overview, but we still want the points. So I want right. you to earn the points. Right. So this is how you earn it. You have to come right. back to pretend that we are your organization and you have to disseminate the information to us. We we still ain't clear on what would it would you attend and you know what they talk about if you met anybody, if you did actually met network, it doesn't seem so. Okay, if so I just mean if I met be... anyone to the meeting, if I introduced myself, I met anyone to the actual meeting. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So we we want you to do it properly because again, in no, your... I, didn't, I didn't introduce myself. I'm you know reason for me to lie. Right. I did not right. So the whole point of it is to network, right? Not just to get five points, not just to show up and get five points, but to be able to properly come back and say I attended this meeting. This the purpose was networking. This is who I met, and this is what I learned. Okay, okay. Uh, Ms. Fuller. Hi. Anyway, I'm looking at Toastmasters Camichael. They have a Camichael branch. I'm yes, just there's looking. a. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, okay, okay, I'm going to send an invite to them right now. Let me see how fast they get back to me. Because their next meeting, I think, is the first and third Tuesday of the month. So I'll see. What is the cutoff time for this again? Well, you have not done the review. Class. So, Miss Fuller, okay, so you want, so I even I listen for, I listen for the word of the day. And you want to know if I met anyone. You actually want us to introduce ourselves now, let's stop. How else, uh, how else do you network? The whole purpose is to network. There's no use you just go in and, and not meet anybody, right? Okay. Really? I know, right? <laughs> but then, I, I mean, like I say, it's not mandatory. That's true. It's not mandatory. You don't have to do it. It's just, you know, most classes, I see that persons after the exam, they come back and they say, Ms. Bullitt, you know, I needed a 65. I got 63, to, you know, percent. I, I give every possible point. So, you know, this is the this opportunity. Is you yeah. have yeah, to, to don't come after the exam because a lot of, I mean, where we're at now as a class, a lot of us are, 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 are borderline. So, I, you know, I would take any opportunity to get extra points to ensure that I sit comfortably in the exam, but it's up to you. The retake is $150. So this is your way of not getting a 62 or 63. You're not going to pay $150. Or there are persons who... Um, have like a straight A, um, you know, uh, the certain grade they expect to have. And, and if they're two points away from the from an A, they fall apart. And I, this is why, so this is why we came up with a way to help you along the way. So you don't have to post, try and gain more points or pay money to reset. I had somebody who got a 80 something and she said that was the lowest grade she ever got. She paid the 150. And we took the exam because she wanted straight A's. It's, it depends on who you are. You know, it depends on how you feel. I thought, I, I thought it was a waste of money at the time, but she insisted and we allowed her. But if she had taken advantage of the 5%, she could save $150 on a reset of the whole exam. But it's just up to you. Okay, so it's just an opportunity. You don't have to, it's a benefit. You don't have to take advantage of it. But I can tell you that this is the only class I've ever seen not taking advantage of it. And for a supervisory skills class, it's, that's concerning. Because again, we have to start to act and, and like supervisors, like we can have somebody under, you, you know, we, are, we have the right behavior, the right attitude. Um, and we actually know what we're doing so that we can, you know, train the person behind us properly. You know, so take this on. Um, Denise, Miss Miss Dean said, did you call about your midterm? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but I, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, no, I, said, I, actually, I actually wanted the actual paper, the paper that we sat. Okay, but is it not for the final though? No, what I wanted to do is basically go over some things and see where I need to improve. 
Okay, but I said last week that we're only going to cover 10, 5, I know, two, I know. I, see, the thing is, I mean, it's just a normal practice that I have. I just normally just... Okay, to I just want to make I sure that you... Personally. I, I, I just want to make sure you didn't think that your chapters... I have the chapters that you said. I have oh, the chapters okay. you say that we were going to... Yeah, I have them. I'm, well, that's fine. I just check in to make sure... Yes, name is Buller. Hi. He said that it'll be chapter 10, chapter 3, and chapter... No, everything, if you look at your agenda, everything after the midterm, all the chapters, we would have covered after the midterm. Okay. Okay? So just look at the agenda. Um, did you complete the um, crossword for chapter 5? This one year that was on the exam and persons fell apart and thought it was very difficult, even though they added for homework. Did, did any of we you get a crossword? It? I started it. I'm going to lie. I started it and I didn't finish it. It started to get a little difficult, per se, looking back and forth and trying to figure out what it should be. And I Okay, really but if it's it. on the final exam, don't be, be surprised. And that's your opportunity. And right there to practice it may not be chapter five it could be any of those chapters so oh, wow. okay we have a crossword yeah she gave it i don't homework. recall it being there for homer that's the crossword at the back of the chapter yeah, yeah. she said that chapter do a crossword puzzle on 131 it was for our practice right yeah. for practice oh I yes. thought you were saying it was one on the actual test because I say no, I didn't recall it. Oh, sounds okay. Good. So we all clear now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So Kendra, give an overview, please, of where you are with your presentation and who you chose to mentor. Good evening, all. Um, I chose to mentor a 28-year-old young lady. And uh, you want me to give the topic and everything that we're, we've been covering for the last five weeks as well? Sure. Okay. What we're dealing with is financial literacy. And it's been very, very interesting. Like I think I previously shared, um, she didn't know what a charge card per se was and the differences between that and a credit card. She was absolutely blown away when she saw the amount of fees uh, associated with her mortgage because uh, we looked at loans, we looked at some collection aspects, we looked at budgeting, we also looked at savings and some, a little bit of the uh, investing aspect. This particular Thursday, we meet for one hour on Thursdays. And uh, this week we're really gonna get, I'm gonna really be getting the feedback I need from her as to what she got from it. Even though she's been giving a feedback every week, what she's gonna do is give me back her feedback over the overall experience over the past six weeks, uh, what she has gained from it. And we're gonna go from there. And then I could be able to start my paper and be able to submit it to you. That's just okay. a generalized overview of what we've covered, but I must say it was, it appears that it was an eye-opening experience for her because like she said, um, okay. okay, I'll just stop. Heck no, you wanna say something else? No, no, I, no. I just looked at it because I see part of the, uh, one of the criteria that you gave us is talking about trust. And she emailed me on last week and she got a job offer because unfortunately she, because of COVID, uh, place of employment actually closed down and she was let go. But here it is, you know, she and I, I was kind of shocked that she shared it with me, but she felt comfortable enough to share it with me. She was offered a contract for about $28,000 a year, a one year contract with a particular, a local based company. And she actually just started, she just responded to the email and sent back a counter offer and they were negotiating back and forth. I haven't heard anything of whether the company has gotten back to her, but you know, there were several things that she shared that I found. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So it was a growing experience for both she, I mean, for both she and I, because we both uh, learned some new things about one another that we did not know prior to this whole mentoring program starting. 
Okay, great. Kendrick, th thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, Margaret. Is Margaret still there? She probably stepped away. Okay, Denise, go ahead then. She's here, Margaret. Okay. Um, so I picked a young lady. She, she's been in the bank for about two years, not quite, but about two years. And um, she was just recently transferred to our main branch. Um, I'm downtown, but I'm not in the branch. I'm upstairs. So when I, um, when I approached her, I approached her uh, with a, basically a learning experience type mentality. Um, I, well, first of all, I had to get the okay from my manager and it was cool with her. And so um, I just wanna say they doing some construction next door to me. So I don't know, can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, so. When I approached her, I presented it as a um, a learning training type process for six weeks. And um, I presented it as getting a step up over her counter, over her peers. And she was very enthused about it. Um, so when I, when we started, um, it was like maybe, two weeks away from our month end process. And um, so I kind of built her up towards how our month end looks. Um, our month end, every, I mean, everybody's kind of familiar. I mean, not kind of, but those that are in the bank know normally month end are a bit more hectic than the regular working days. And so we've been, she's been coming to me um, on her lunch hour, and I've been going through the different reports that would build up to the month end package. And um, she was very responsive, asking questions. And um, sometime it'll be weeks later, and she'd be like, Well, how did this happen? Or aren't we supposed to, you know? So she was very engaged. Um, and not only that, I haven't been in the branch in about maybe 10 years. And so we was able to exchange a lot of information, like so much things has changed in the branch. Um, you kind of tend to forget, like a lot of people working in the bank, their ultimate goal is to get out the branch and that hectic lifestyle. But so it's been a ex fair exchange on both parts. And so she was able to even drop some knowledge on me because what we used to do back then things has changed so much even now things has even changed since COVID a lot of stuff that they used to do even last year well not last year prior to COVID has now changed so it's been good it's been educational on both parts and um surprisingly it wasn't as hard as I thought it would have been, I guess probably too, because she was very interested and very engaged and wanted to learn and wanted to get that put up. So that's where we, I, I um, I'm just trying to really put it together now, basically, because we reached a point where she see me and we, we just connect like you know she know me long time and I know her a long time and even she said like her parents would now sometimes come to her and ask us certain things about upstairs and she's able to answer them okay so that's where we are yeah so excellent Denise and I'm happy that you know it's too cool and you're finding finding it um beneficial and again not being overwhelmed by the process because like you said it's not as difficult as you thought it would be. So so very yeah. good. And again, okay. it's good practice 
for when you become the supervisor, most persons will look to you for information. You may not have um, all the answers, but you are to be information seeking and then you know, I could call on Kendrick, I could call on Tanisha, I could call on Margaret. You have to have right. key contacts. So that, that's, that, that's very good. Okay, okay, Fabian. Thank you. Is, is Fabian here? Hi, good day. Good day. Um, my mentoring is still ongoing. Um, should be ending about now. Um, it's more of a training process because I was in the branch and I had to leave for six months as of January for development training um, with our trust department in the Cayman Islands. So I needed to train someone to take my position in the branch and, you know, teach them the daily, daily work, what's expected of them and what they're supposed to be accountable for. Um, she's, unfortunately I left before, like probably like a month after, but we're doing it online because we don't have time to do it face to face because we're in different locations. So whenever she needs assistance or when she has any questions or queries and is stuck on something, she reached out to me via our um, communication channel. And I'm able to assist her there. And it's also it's also building her self-esteem. I'm guessing she actually wants to pursue more with her life as in where she's at in the bank. Um, she enrolled in school, which is a good thing. She kind of said that I influenced her to do that because she wanted to seek further knowledge and not be stuck like the last person said stuck in the branch life. Everyone wants to get out the branch. Um, so I'm just trying to find a way to end it. She seems to be standing well on her own at the moment, but it, it's just kind of a hassle seeing as we're, we're in different places. We don't have time to communicate like that. So just trying to end it is my challenge at the moment. Okay, so excellent um, Fabian. And I don't know if you mind me sharing with the class halfway through, um, Fabian did have some difficulties because she was moved um, from her location and we discussed it and I'm happy that she did not give up, you know, because things didn't go as planned, but she found an alternative route, like she said, they're doing it online. So excellent. Um, as supervisors, we'll find that, you know, we may have a plan, but life happens and work happens and changes happen and sometimes it's outside of your control. Um, immediately you have to find a solution. You can't just give up and, and say, well, you know, she moved, so I, I couldn't continue. So very good, um, Fabian, for, for, for hanging in there. Uh, get some extra points for, you know, finding a solution and hanging in there. Okay, so very good. Um, Yuri? Hello. Um... Well, um, mine is a bit unusual because I don't have one mentee, but two. Oh wow! Okay. So that's a that's a bit of that's a bit of a juggle for me, but in all in all, I'm really enjoying it. Um, another blood twist. I didn't go to them. They were actually put on me. Um, uh, the bank, uh, the bank recently hired some contract employees. And the supervisor just wasn't having them. So they throw they threw both of them on me. And what's so funny is the dynamic is so I fall in between their demographic because one is 10 years younger than I am, and the other is three years older than me. So the experiences is is is, is, is just very different because you have you have Eugenia with a male with a different background and a female from a different background. So you just have to, so I'm in a position where I have to be flexible and pliable to relate to both of them. And in doing that, both of them are receptive. Um, all of us being in the high level of trust and confidence in each other. And we were crying together. So I, I thought that our relationship would have ended at the end of November, but it actually got extended up until the beginning of summer. 
So it's just an ongoing process and I'm truly enjoying it. And I can't wait to share more once the report is finished. Okay, very good, very good, excellent. Excellent. Um, Tanisha? Okay, let me see. Let me I just start for one second. You want me to come right back to you? Oh. No, I just oh, okay. it up. So I chose a year old. She is uh, one of my friend's daughter. Even though me and my friend aren't the same age, she's a little older than I am. And seeing that she she works in a bank like I do, um, I I reach out to my friend because you know we have a relationship and she always open opens up to me. So I asked my friend if if it's okay if I can mentor her daughter. And her daughter said it was okay. So she told me that she wants to discuss. Um, she needs professional guidance in the workplace. And she is encouraged because she has a, her main concern is lack of job security. So the first session, it was a little, what I could say. I wouldn't say tension, more, more or less hostility because I had to gain her trust. And she, she wanted me not to, you know, tell her mom or whatever. So each session, we, we discussed how was work. And we, we also discussed ways on which you could feel more secure in the workplace. So it's like I said, it's ongoing. And I have about two more sessions, one this week and then one the next week. So by next week, I'll be able to compile everything and have the essay ready for when it's due. Okay. Okay, good. Very good. Um, thank you for, you know, helping the young people. Very good. Um, Roseanne? Okay, so after this process where you would have taken this mentee under your belt and, and sharing your knowledge. Hold on, I'm gone. I, I was Yeah, we already we, oh, well, you, you, was here, you was in here, Margaret, so we'll, oh, we'll get back to you. Yeah. So after you would have taken this um Mentee under your back. Is there, a, you know, under your wing? Sorry. Is Hello? there any? Is there anybody that still want wants to be a supervisor? Has this changed Ms. anybody's Bullard. mind? Miss Bullard, you can hear me now. Yeah. Sorry, my um, internet to drop down. Okay. Yeah. So just give us a minute. Okay. So okay. is there anybody who does not um? The want to supervise any longer. I mean, after we've gone through the mo majority of the book and we see all the ins and outs and the intricacies of being a supervisor. And now we actually have a mentor who's looking after us where we must lead by example and, you know, uh, discipline ourselves to be on time, turning our work on time, be responsible as persons are gonna be looking at what we do, not really what we say. Um, we saw how the great bank works. We saw counseling. We saw outside of the box um, persons have and work related issues that perhaps supervisors have to deal with as well. Um, is there anybody that has changed their mind and prefer to just be back office with no, no staff? Or um, are all of us still excited to get to the next level? And we understand that. Or we see now why the persons who do supervise get paid a little bit more than the persons who do not supervise. I never wanted to be a supervisor, so <laughs> my mind ain't changed, but it ain't getting geared up to be one. And the question is it's a is lot the, of work. Is the, is the stress worth a little bit of money? No, it, it exactly. won't be. No, no Kendrick, it won't. It won't. You you have to look at it as before you lead, you have to serve. So you have to look at it as your years of service. I, I understand are. that. If if any one of you desires to be a leader, you must first be a servant. I, I, mm -hmm. I get the I get the whole Easter story. Yeah. I'm, I'm asking, um, 
how many of us are, you know, you shared the story of when did somebody break the ATM and you're willing to come out of your house at two, three in the morning because it requires being a leader per se requires so much of, of you that you have to go above and beyond. And do we have a love for the job? I mean, it's a question. Do you have a love for the job, the organization? I think those are questions that need to be asked first. I agree with what Kendrick said. I mean, before this class, I never wanted to be a supervisor, especially up where I'm working. And after this mentoring, I still don't want to be a supervisor. I mean, it all depends on what your career path is. Like he said, it's a lot of stress. A lot is expected from you. Mm -hmm. And most of the time you're belittle or they don't see your work. It's, it's hard to change the system. Right. So the only way to change the system is that you become the leader. Um, and so these are one of the steps that you have to go through so that you become the leader and that you can make a difference. Then you can make a difference. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like that, like, uh, you know, for the first 10 years of my career, I supervised because I thought that was the only way. And then I realized there was the easier way, you, you know, because I couldn't deal with the personalities and, um, you know, you have to always raise above them and trying to balance policy and procedure and personality was very, very difficult for me. So, and yes, I stepped back from the forefront and I went in back office and I always said, no, I don't want any staff. And I still, you know, ended up with some, but I'm thankful for the experience. Yeah, I think that's my challenge too. I don't think, I mean, if I get, I, if I get the opportunity, because my mindset is I like to take on a challenge, but it wouldn't be my preference. Like I go into apply for a supervisory position because even myself, I could, I could speak for myself as a, I'm a blind staff. Trust me, person, be, dealing with people, personality ain't fun. It isn't fun. So to actually be in charge of, um, adults, that isn't easy. Trust me, I could see that. That ain't that isn't easy. <laughs> then learning, learning, like getting more in depth with this class. I don't think I would want to take that on. Yeah. And and the thing about it is, you don't become effective until you get the most difficult people mm -hmm. to show up to work every day and just do what they are supposed to. Do. That's when you become effective. <laughs> okay, so it's like a maze. But it, like again, it's a it's a part of life that you you know do it whilst you're young because by right, you know as you get older your tolerance runs out and you, it's really more difficult to deal with people. So do it do it the younger you are the better, and and get it under your wing because you will find that if you don't have that supervision experience on your resume, you will get blocked from a lot of positions. So so at some point, you know just. Go through no no go through the process where you know everything happy at home because it'd be very stressful at work. Don't go when everything ain't good at home. See that's that's going from more to more. How you could do that? Because how you could decide that? Because what if you you're a supervisor and things has happened? What if something just happened at home? You know, it, oh, and things will no. What I'm saying things things will happen and. You know, life is about seasons, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall, but things will always happen. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, at a certain point in my life, I was supervising and then I had to adopt some children, right? And so I basically sat down, I talked to my manager, I said, I cannot deal. You know, this is a new thing for me that's happening at home. Um, I can't do this right now. Is there any way you can move me out of this position? Because now I have to pick up from school. I have to do certain things and, and what have you. And luckily, the, you know, they really understood and they really worked with me. And Royal Bank was such a large company. It was easy for them to, to move me around. If you're in a smaller company, sometimes it's, it's not that easy. So, you know, they kind of worked with me then. And as my children got older, which took 10 years, and luckily I was still there, you know, when they got older, then I said, okay, I can go back in the forefront, I can take on the staff, I can help the person who 
ready to walk out the door, jump out the window right now, and we could reverse the rules. But things are a bit different. Ms. Bullard, you know? I, I, Ms. Bullard, I think it's, the Fabian said, it's, I don't know, I don't know. In the workplace today, it seems as if the love that used to be and the passion that was once there for what you did, it is completely drained. You know, I look at some certain people. I went to an organization today to get lunch. And I just asked the young lady one question. And the look I got, and I'm like, Tex, did I steal from you? It's like people are just completely unhappy with what they're doing. You know, I, growing up, I always heard, if you find something that you love, you'll never work again. I think that we need to ask ourselves, are we in the right place? And can we fall in love with this job and the organization? I think that those are the questions that we just need to be honest with. I don't think it's really, really more or less supervisory because I think judging from what I'm seeing here, I think you, there's a great crew of people who are willing to be supervisors. I think we just haven't found our first or our second love and fallen in love with the actual job. Correct. That's what I think I'm but, seeing more or less in the country as a whole. But a lot of people too didn't even choose this as a career because this wasn't even my my first choice. You know, this became my career after five years and we said, oh, I, this is only a job because I need to make more money and then eventually it turned into 25 years and then I realized, hey, you know, but... I search high and low because I don't believe, like, I believe happiness is a choice and I, I, I always choose happiness no matter what's going on in my life. Um, I realized, and it took me till I was about 35 and so that would have been my, let's say 10th year in, in, in banking that I had to be the change that I wanted to see. There, everywhere you go, there was gonna be an annoyance, something that you didn't like, somebody who didn't like you, something you had to deal with. Right. And so every day, rather than focus on what was right, we focus on what is wrong. Back to Les Brown saying 89 percent of our thoughts are negative. Right. And so therefore, when I started to realize, hey, you know, I can control the way I feel. I can control the way I think. I could be more optimistic than pessimist. I could, if I truly, truly hate this job, leave it. And then go or, and go home and then see if I could deal with just being unemployed, you know. So I, I went to a phase where I realized I had to change my attitude. I had to change the way I looked at the organization. I had to pull out the benefits and even the people that, that hey, you know, couldn't stand my guts. I, and I could say hate because a lot of people, like I said, I had three um, managers. Some of my godparents and my children, we still go to church together. I have my very best friend who was one of my managers. And then I have some managers who absolutely hated my gut. So, you, you know, over a lifespan or if you uh, somewhere for 20 or 30 year, years or in a relationship for 20 or 30 years, things are going to change. That's why I say you have to know which season you are in. But when Royal Bank, my, my office finally closed down, you know, I was able to thank the people. And they, the people thought I was crazy because, you know, you have a little party when, you know, for everybody who was leaving, um, whoever's the last person, I guess, didn't get a party. But I got a little party and where they said, tell us how you feel after 16 years. I said, I'm thankful to the IT guy because he really hated my guts and he did everything to get in my way. But he helped me to, you know build a stronger relationship with God and never miss church and always pay my tax because I knew there was no way I could come in here on a Monday morning and miss church and have to deal with him for the whole entire week. And, and that's truly how I talk. So you could find the best, you, you, you know, in every bad situation or everybody who doesn't like you or everybody who you don't like. You could decide to look at what, what is the benefit? What am I getting from this? Um, how do I show up? To work every day and be happy it, it, it's you you can't force yourself to want to put yourself in that position at working for a uh, institution that you don't you're not happy with like you said and but then that's just said is it easier to work for that institution and have a paycheck and be able to take pay your bills and focus on the things in your life and make your life happy 
or can you, do you just complain that I hate this job? I don't think it's complaining. I think it's just leveling up yourself, like trying to, you're putting up with it and you also have to have the right credentials, like the right things that you need to go to a place that you would like to be. Yeah, but enjoy the process. The, what is happening with us is we're not enjoying the process. Whilst we, you in school right now and you say, when I get this degree or when I finish this and when I get this new job, no. When you get that new job, a new devil could be waiting for you. <laughs> Something else. I am telling you're you. Alive. That, you're that's alive. That's how life is. Somebody else could be waiting there to tell you that. So unless you learn how to deal with people that constantly get in your way and tear you down, no matter where you go, you'll be unhappy. No matter who you supervise, you know, if I had paid attention, I, I normally had 10 to 30 staff that reported to me. And in the first part of my career, I paid attention to the people who didn't like me, trying to convince them uh, that I was a good manager and I cared about them and what happened. They, it was nothing I could do. And then halfway, when I became mature, like I said, 35, I realized what was wrong with the world was people. And then I said, okay, this has to come from within. So I still paid attention to the people who didn't like me, but I focused on the people who did like me and who thought I was a good manager. And like I said, I made it mandatory for my staff to go to school. I said, if you have a high school diploma, you cannot be in my department if you are not in school. If you have a problem, you come and sit down and talk to me. And there were one or two persons that sat down and spoke to me and said, Ms. Bull, did you ruin in my life? Blah, blah, blah. I was, you, you can't make it mandatory to go to school. I am not going. I said, okay, fine. Another person, his mother called and said, I have gotten loans for the first two years of his degree. And she thanked me. She invited me to his graduation, but she cried and she bought me flowers. It, it, it just depends on the person. But when the bank was closing down, what do you think happened to the person who said I was ruining their life? Who is now in that position for five years, the bank is closing down, and the only thing you have on your resume is a high school diploma. What do you, you think happened? Unemployed. I didn't hear you, Kendra. No, I said I think they were probably unemployed. Okay. New okay. So that, that was the point. So let's try to be proactive, not reactive. Let's you know, the change has to be within. And I'm, I, I welcome anybody. I've been looking for the answer my whole entire life. The change has to be within because over lifespan, somebody's going to get sick, somebody's going to lose their job. Um, this pandemic now, um, so somebody's going to pass away. It's, it's going to change your life. You could decide to sit down and cry or you could decide that, okay, I have to move on from this. I have to look at this differently. Okay? Okay. Um, so, Roseanne, you want to tell us? Is Roseanne there? Yeah. Okay. Tell, tell us about your mentee. My mentee is I'm involved in a church group in my church. And the department that I'm, that I'm in, it's, it's on the teens. So the person that I picked, she is only 18. So every Sunday we would be able to spend time and thing together during the church and then we'll have a pro we'll have a program after it. So um we've been going through the fish, she's been talking about what's been going on with her personal with her, um personal life, both of her parents were employed in the hotel field. Both of them were, has, hasn't been called back since the COVID. Her mom just had a baby too. So me and her is more dealing with a little bit more personal, but we got to know each other and I've been dealing with her and telling her ways how the hand will pay up pressure. But me and I have gotten really, um, really close. We speak to each other just about every day. So 
I feel like I was able to. I feel like I was able to build a bond, and I've gotten to anything. So now I have to just word it and piece it into one. Okay. Okay, Rosanna, and, and again, thank you again for helping the youth. Um, there are about three or four verses in the Bible that talk about good counsel. And so that pay of pressure is really, really real. And um, a lot of young people, you know, they don't feel comfortable talking to their parents. And the, their friends have just as much knowledge as they do. And so um, don't take it lightly, because I think that's wrong, what's wrong in the world today. Um, Persons are too afraid to, you know, that people are going to talk about them. And so um, they don't speak about real issues. So good counsel. I think it says, um, for lack of good counsel, people may perish or something like that in the Bible. So, so very good. And, and, and thank you for um, taking the time to, you know, give good advice. Okay. Okay. Margaret? Okay, so the young lady that I, well, first of all, this is someone I am, um, my mentor, she works with me in the same company. Um, they decide, the company decided to do like this little cross training. So that's how I end up um, getting, um, getting to mentor her. She is 29 years old. Um, so she works, she's working along with me at work. So, um, but I did realize when I did approach her about it, she was, oh, she, she was, she was okay with it. Um, until when I asked her, like when I actually at work type old questions and wanted to answer it, she was like, no, she didn't like that. Um, so I mean, I'm, I'm normally have like a lot of verbal conversation. She don't want to like jot nothing down. But now our relationship is more personal. Like for example, um, let me give you an example of what I get in personal behaving. She was telling me that her like her bank account is a bank account share between her and her mother. And then she was telling me all the reasons why she hate that. Yeah, you know? Ain't probably gonna be there. Right. Like, <laughs> I said it's problems say, already. Yeah. <laughs> and she's 29. Like this paper, I don't know if it's even 30 pages. <laughs> As real talk was putting plenty that you had on right now. Yeah, but yeah. at 29, she can't have her own bank account. And he, and listen, bullet. Oh, no, listen, Margaret. Paul Bake, listen, listen. Don't Mono, know my friend thought. Shots yeah. fired. Listen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, so like I say, she she's not jotting anything down because I had my nice question, Emma Fuller, because I thought, you know, it'd have been nice if I get it, you know, let her fill it out and then attach it to the work. But she was not comfortable like that, like I said. And, you know, we just have work stuff and now it rule over the personal. So the first issue that she has, like I said, is her and her mother shares of no. She okay. This account she have, her and her mommy on this one account. Now you know what it. <laughs> you know that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying is true. You know choice. You know choice enough. <laughs> Basic. Well, honestly, there's no. She don't. It seems if I don't say she don't have a choice because she's a woman. But if she have no choice. Okay. So we kind of dealing with that. And then another thing too is I feel like she she doesn't like it roll over the what can wreck point was um the financial literacy so it seemed like her mother does all of it doesn't seem that way sorry i'm using the wrong, the wrong word her mother does all of her like she goes to her daughter's atm um, bank with her atm um you know which wall would she want off she have access to like her online banking and is you know <laughs> Margaret, Margaret, I mean, you don't want to, I mean, you know, you don't know, the, I mean, unless you know the relationship or whatever. So just give her pointers to, to help her and then perhaps throw in something like I read this article on being independent, you know, or I read this article on financial literacy uh, or the importance of, because you say she don't like to take notes. So the importance of taking notes and giving feedback, <laughs> just, just to, you know, oh, yeah, and educate I, her yeah. in that way. I you you know, but don't I, I don't know the dynamic of the relationship exactly. to say change it. Exactly. Well, that's you know, problem. So, that's problem straight so, so, twenty nine. I could ask a question. Yeah, Kendrick, you don't know the you don't know the dynamic. So just just you know, 
But just give her, the, give her the information and let it be her choice, Margaret, that's, to decide. That's what I'm doing, Candy. Yeah, I'm so, her the yeah. so independence, yes, the importance so of taking notes, and then find some financial literacy. Mm. Um, yeah. Go ahead, mm. Denise. You said you want to ask a question. Hold on, wait, wait. Let me finish while I ask the question. You ain't finished? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, Margaret, we Mar need to save it. We want the presentation. We don't want to give us all, all the details. Oh, okay, okay. That's the okay. overview, and I want to make Sorry. sure that everybody's on the right track. Um, you know, can Sorry, present. Okay. You know, so I have that down, Miss Bullet. The talk about independence, and then I have the the part where I'm trying to offer, like you know, financial literacy. Like you know, when you off age, you know, it's okay to have a joint account with your mom and you. Under the age of eighteen, and hmm. you, you know, better find like, out the dynamic. You better find out the dynamics of that not relationship. Not me, no, yeah. sir. That's not no. I am I'm listening to her. No, no, I am listening to the conversation when she's speaking. I am listening, listening. Okay, listening. Well, you chose okay, drama. Okay, when she when she, when I'm listening, I am. I don't want to get mixed mix up in their drama, mm. which is why my <laughs> my reply is, you know. Um, now, Margaret, good mm. counsel. Now we want we ain't just checking the box. We want to be effective. If there's a real I, need, just leave her with the information yeah. and explain it. That's what explain I'm doing, the benefits. Bullet. That's what I'm doing, Miss Bullet. I'm telling. Okay. I'm teaching her. Hey, you know it's okay to have your own bank account. I'm teaching her the process of how to open up a bank account and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Okay, mm -hmm. we actually went and did that. So okay, okay, exactly. good. You all actually good. went and did that. Yeah, I talk. Well, see, you have this. You listen to the project. Because yeah, did the mother know account. about this? Does the mother know about <laughs> this? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just asking the question with everybody thinking. It? It's a spoiler. It's a spoiler. If I did yeah. the second part, you wouldn't believe it. But it's I miss bullets, I leave it. I'm gonna leave it for the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Denise, go ahead. No, that's okay. I yeah, I can leave it. That's all right. Never mind. <laughs> no, go ahead. Answer the question. Miss Bullet? No. So I got to go first. I gotta go first. You gotta go first. <laughs> you gotta go first <laughs> Very good, Margaret. Very good to get everybody engaged and ready and waiting. So good, good. But trust me, Very I, good, I, was like, I, I was the same. My eyebrow raised because I, I could, I could hold my mouth, but I can't help my face. But I, you know. <laughs> and remember, communication is non seven percent, seven percent, what you say, and ninety. Yeah. So, and please remember that the cameras will be on for the presentation. So. All of us who need to prepare. <laughs> well, I can't present Miss Bullet. Why? Oh, no. <laughs> there's more to the mm. subject. I can't, I know. There's a lot. They're going to names. Margaret, we don't need names and we don't need anything don't need personal. We just need an overview. You can't present. Yeah, leave people the know. names people out because I want to hear this. But people know my face and you want to be posting these things. No, leave the names out, Margaret. If you leave names no, out, then. What I am saying is when it's recording, this is this space be public. They actually post these on YouTube, you know. Yeah, uh, but Margaret, you, like you need a grade for your project, right? This like you need don't call a, nobody name. Yeah, don't call nobody. We don't need any details of who the person is. We just we don't even need to know their age. You could say mid age as, or whatever. As far as so we know, you no personal made this person. live on East Street. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> no, Kendrick. Stop it. No. Yeah, but Ms. you can't this, this be on. Gonna, this, 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 oh lord. Yeah, your this camera's gonna be on. Something for off though. Kendrick, that means I got, I can't, I don't know. You gotta go first, man. You gotta go first. No, the little spoiler thing. See, I. Yeah. Anyway, Denise, go ahead with your question, please. <laughs> no, I just was wondering if, if maybe there is some kind of, uh, mental. Defect. No. Some. No. no, no, no I don't no, mean no, like no. some people Ms. not. Some people like have just a Ms. hint, Ms. a hint. Of slowness, not she's not no, she's not slow. I'm not gonna lie. No, to she's not Denise, slow. Well, let me let me, let me tell this. you something about Bahamian well, mothers. A, a lot true. of Bahamian fathers and, and mothers, parents, I should say, they raise their children to say, I spend all my money on you. When you become 18, you now take care of me. A lot of children are in that predicament where their parents control their money because they feel that I sacrifice and I raise you, so now you must take care of me. A lot of um, um, persons are controlled that way, so I'm not surprised. All right. Hey, so, 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 yeah, single mothers, single oh. mothers make their sons feel that you owe me something now. And I, I, I don't believe that in anything. Miss Bullet, oh, okay, Miss Bullet, preach, preach, Miss Bullet, preach. Bullet, preach. preach. Giving away my presentation. Preach, oh, sorry. Bullet, yeah. Yeah. No, for two yeah. things, and, and, and that's... Uh, Miss Bullet, no, um, no, 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 no. Literacy needs to be go out on that because that's a... That's Ms. a Bullet, big problem no, in the no, no, Bahamian no, no, society. 
No, oh. that's enough. That's enough. Okay, okay. sorry. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, that's enough. So we'll learn just, about that in the presentation. Okay, just, exactly. Just, just, Even more just, interesting. Let's go. Just one more thing. Is that pen? That's what we we would call the version of pensioner, where children take care of their parents and they're, they're the actual pension plan. Yeah, yeah, those pension okay. babies, they, okay. they have it, they what is your plan when you retire? Oh, I had this child. But the but child this ain't the case, she has, a, she has a young mom, so this ain't no pension baby. Oh, yeah, especially those who, oh, I had you when I was 16. Yeah, this oh, ain't no, yeah. no so they, mother's now. They, they ruin those children's lives and, and make them feel that they, there's nothing wrong if you want to help your parents, but your parents, I don't believe, and everybody's different, should not be 100% Dependent on you, or if you're yeah. against giving a certain amount, no, there should be no mandatory amount, especially if you have a wife and kids. But a lot of Bahamian what? mothers instill their in their children that yes, you they hear me, or you, you disrespecting me, or something. Get like the hell, that's what you yeah, are you get yeah, hell. yeah, are you doing something wrong? Hi so guys, we gotta enough. break away from that's that. Enough. Okay, yeah, Denise, Denise, March 30th at 6 p.m. sharp. <laughs> so, Miss Bullet, so hold on. So, you say when I give when I give an overview of what I get from her, I don't have to call no names. No, no, like no, that. no, no. Make it personal. Okay. We don't need to know who. We just okay. need to, to know the dynamics of your project trust, communication, what you mentored about, was it effective, what was the feedback? Okay? Okay. Okay, trust, communication, mentor, and what was okay, was it affected? Yeah, everything on the sheet. Look at the sheet. I, I don't have everything in my head. I just call off of the top of my head to follow okay. the sheet. Yeah. Okay. So um did anybody read um the control process? Yeah. In chapter six. Anybody has a comment, anything in, in terms of a contribution to the discussion? No? I, I have I have one more question, Miss Bullet. How you won't tell me how long this need to be? Because I like the time. Time no matter. I don't know. Yeah, so fifteen to twenty minutes, no more than you know, fifteen to twenty minutes. That's a long time, my lord. That's a long okay. time. That's a long time. Okay, so long long no more. Sorry, Bullet. sorry. Then no more than ten minutes a person. That's a long ten time. minutes. Still long. I was ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten no more than so it could be about five minutes or oh, three to five it, minutes. It depends on you. Okay. The, the whole right. thing is that I don't want somebody to just go the night before and make up some stuff because we've had that done in the past. So no, just Ms. Bullard, actually, man. I would have hoped you all have gone to the six weeks or at least some weeks and actually made a contribution to the society. Miss Bullard, Margaret, you need at least twenty minutes. Yeah. Okay. So I, for, I, for I, the I, 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 <laughs> Right, you won't be graded on again because we're not in person. Um, there's normally a grading sheet that we give out where you get judged on eye contact, relevance, also time, and all of that. So, because we're online, yeah, I, I'm just going to grade, okay? But I wish this class in particular was in person because I, you know, overall, I feel that we need more practice, um, speaking, uh, public speaking and making contributions to discussion and, and just practicing this. This is the forum where we practice because you could go to work tomorrow and your supervisor could say, you know, I have Kendrick in training. Kendrick, come up and uh, conduct the meeting for me or talk about this. Yeah. And, and then you, sh you shy because you wouldn't have had any practice oh, or you're okay. afraid to speak in front of people. So I would have liked to first, the, you know, had more practice. Ms. Bullard, in, in all actuality, I actually am chairing the meeting for the department on tomorrow. And I did get sling under the bus. Ah, excellent. <laughs> and, 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 but that's good practice. Good, good practice. Uh, so, oh, you normally speak up in class, so you should be, you know, you should be comfortable when you get up there tomorrow. Robert but they Brooks make the us rules. proud. Make us Robert proud. The rules. Yeah. Okay. So, um, any anybody on the control process? And then towards the end of this chapter, they talk about teething. Nobody read about teething. Yes, no, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was going to get it on that. You're going to get it. Where the teeth finish? <laughs> Nobody read chapter six. Anyway, no, because no, before no, we no, start, I didn't read it. We, okay, so you're before we go to chapter six, because we can end on that in the next 15 minutes. Chapters two and seven, next week we are going to um, um, cover, and that will be the last chapters that we have. And so I want to assign. Um, 
um, on page 30. Can you join to page 30? And um, it talks about cultural values. In the yellow box is a news flash or cultural variables. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm assigning that. That's Kendra. On 31 is Margaret, technology. Okay. Um, Fabian, e-business on 32. Yuri, um, social responsibility on 42 and 43. Um, 44, Keith Colbrook, sorry? Say 43 and 44? Yeah, um, 42 and 43. Colebrook is ethics and ethics on 44 and 178 and 180 in chapter seven. So 44, 178, and 180 in chapter seven. That's Colebrook. Hold on, what's what the hold on, hold on. 44, I, I, 178, and 44 in chapter two and 178 and 180 in chapter seven. Okay. Okay. Does Bullet need me to read anything? I'm going to assign everybody. Okay. Who's speaking now? Blakely. Oh, Blakely. Okay. Um, did you give us an overview of your project? Um, no, I didn't. Okay. We'll get back to that. Okay. The, the decision making process. Now, if you have a portion, we expect you to, you know, make your contribution. So if you have a reason that you can't be here, you want me, you want me to, I mean, I could give an overview of my mentorship. Okay, so let's finish a sign and then okay. we'll come back to you. Okay. Okay. Um, decision making process, Denise, 185. We're on chapter seven now. Alternatives, 166. Roseanne. Blakely, implementation of a decision and decision tools on 168. So 167 and 168. Implementation of decisions and decision tools. And then we'll all talk about how to improve decisions, how to improve decision making. Okay, so we got that for chapters two and seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. good. Okay, so again, we want you to read what the book says, give us an overview and then do some research online to see if you can add anything else to um, your topic. So there's lots of information out there, Yuri, on social responsibility. So you can just go into Google, see what comes up, and, and give us a little bit more than what, what the book says. Give us an example. Same thing with cultural values and uh, the technical side and decision making. Um, just like reading, people feel that you know it's very remedial. That then Ms. Foley says. You know, one of our major problems in the world is that people don't read. The next problem is comprehension, right? And once we read, we comprehend, many people just don't know how to make a decision. A lot of people are wishy-washy or they are afraid. So um, even though you may think it's a misbullet, anybody could make a decision. No, it's a very difficult process. And to make a good decision that would be beneficial to everybody who the decision affects, okay? So that's the next week. Excuse me, Miss um, Bullard. Let me just confirm. You said I'm 185 decision making process, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay, Blakely, you want to go ahead and give us an overview? Okay. Um, the person I decided to mentor was one of my tellers. Um, I chose her because I saw a lot of myself and how. Um, that, and I guess she shows a lot of initiative. So it was kind of, it was kind of an easy decision. She would come to me during her free time to teach us stuff. So it's, it's training and mentorship. And two, I have a position available in my department for somebody to be a telesupervisor. So I saw that as an opportunity for me to groom her for that position. Okay, excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so um, hopefully she is successful and, and um, both of you um, find the training um, beneficial. Yeah. So very good, very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, all right. 
So it sounds very interesting and very exciting. So real, you know, it could be very provocative and everybody can be engaged. So make it as interesting as, as, as possible. So Margaret already have all of us on the edge of our feet. So very, very good, Margaret. Very good. Okay, good. And we have our um, subjects for next week. Okay, good. So get the control process and then we can talk about Ethan and which all of us should be familiar with. Um, again, after we would have... Hold on, I was speaking for that. Hold on, I don't I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. What you say? What you trying to say? say why you telling me you all don't think? I put all I should be from You know, you all ain't familiar with... I say familiar with Ethan. Yeah. Familiar. I didn't say you all is T. It's a good sentence coming up in the A. I ain't accused nobody of Ethan. I say familiar with. Uh, <laughs> are you on, please? We on page one thirty nine. Thank you. Yeah, but we we fly into this. So his yeah. name is well, right? Uh huh. Go ahead. Are we not to have in the um test? I thought I thought we was we was having a quiz. She Can somebody she respond to Roseanne, please? What happened with the kid quiz? So, so she wasn't going to do it anymore. Yeah, because of the discussion. I know I We had a dynamic um, class last week and she graced us. She gave us charts oh. so that we would not have to do the that exam. particular exam or quiz. I mean, I, we were, I, no, 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 no. It's beneficial yeah, to you because we're going to have those. It's we were also too. studious and just did so uh -huh. excellent and had such a wonderful conversation last week. So we just week, got, everyone just got all points for the quiz. Oh, wow, well, thank you. I'm not real sad you was because I need to take you off my list because you don't seem like you were here. Yeah, and then, and then I'll sometimes I'll be dealing with my daughter, but I I really did, did not hear you say the part. Okay, let me take you off my list then. Sorry for giving you wow. point. You can keep me there because Lisa is sorry for it. Did you did you participate? Let me see if your name on my list. I did. Oh yeah, you talked about the performance appraisal. Okay, because uh, if you didn't okay. participate, you didn't get points. Wow. Okay? I know I did. I did. Okay. All right. All right. Just making sure. Just making sure. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So again, um, the what this book says: you've completed your planning, you set goals, what have you, and after you would have put all these goals and standing plans in place and budgets and schedules. Um, you would need to know if how you would achieve these plans, if they're going to come to fruition, if they make sense. Um, you want to put a test um, in place to check them to make sure that it, it makes sense. So the only way for you to put these tests or checks or unbalances in place is that you have to put in some controls or you have to develop controls. Okay? And in the control process, um, it consists of three separate steps. You measure actual performance, and normally each at the end of the year, um, persons get like a performance appraisal. So you set those goals, and then um, you would get a performance appraisal that will tell you did you meet actually meet those goals. Um, you compare results with standards again. There are policies and procedures. There's a mission and vision um, vision statement. There are um, limits um, that have to be maintained, and there are what is it quotas that have to be met. So um, you compare, you know, I asked you to open um, 200 savings accounts, you open 100. So you compare your results with whatever standard is in place or whatever goal that you would have set. And then you take corrective action. Now, remember I told you all years ago, um, Royal Bank had put these targets in, in place and a lot of persons didn't feel that they were um, achievable or timely because of, you know, the economic status of the country. However, nobody spoke up. Everybody was too afraid. Everybody spoke on their breaths and said, these results don't make no sense. There's no way we could open up these 200 accounts. And so subsequently, you know, they took on the goal. They talked under their breath. Nobody made a real, you know, say economically, just make, there's no way for us to achieve this. In this time frame, like let's say it's the pandemic, and that year, a, hunt, a Royal Bank led 134 um, account managers to who did not meet their targets. Okay, so that would be an example of corrective action. So, a lot of times, um, when 
you know, January is normally when you would set your goals. You want to make sure that they are smart goals and you learn that they must be specific, measurable, attainable, timely, and relevant. And so you want to ensure that um, before you take on these goals, you want to, you know, your supervisor to say, hey, how are we going to achieve this if, you know, with the pandemic or perhaps after the pandemic, we will set the goals and say, okay, we're challenged. We're going to do whatever, you know, be like a challenge and we're going to do everything possible. This would have been in January 2020. However, in March, the world stopped. And so we need to now adjust. So don't leave those goals and say, well, I know our targets for this, but it's a pandemic and everybody understands. No, everybody does not understand. You want that to be corrected on your performance appraisal. Hey, let's amend our goals for the year, considering that there was a pandemic. And so we could be fairly um, assess at the end of the year and then hopefully there should have been no um, corrective action but it may have been action where the Atlanta is completely closed our target market is Atlanta we, not, we do not um, need so much staff okay so how do we measure this actual performance ways to measure four common sources of information used by supervisors to measure actual performance of personal observation. Normally the supervisor is there on the floor, it's not in an office somewhere in the back. Um, there are statistical reports. Um, I know at Royal Bank we have this big report printer that spread out information every day, you know, told us overdraft, told us um, how many customers our tellers serve. So there was always a competition for the fastest teller. And so that report would tell us who, you know, served uh, most of the customers and that person normally got a reward. And then there are oral reports and then written reports. And normally, um, you know, with the reports halfway through, um, well, quarterly, normally we pull out the goals and we say, okay, we need 200 savings accounts or 200 sales points for the year. So far, you only have 10. So if you would have fit that, I need at least 25 per quarter you would need to beef up in the next quarter or you need to double up somewhere else if you, you know, you're not halfway there, okay? And so um, that's a conversation that could be had. You don't necessarily have to put that in writing, but of course we know at the end of the year for the companies that give out bonuses, this is where um, you get that written report or the overall performance appraisal for the year and you don't want any surprises. So by then, you you know, from personal observation, um, you know, in those conversations, you would know where you are. You should be going into your um, performance appraisal already, giving feedback and saying, but I know I needed 200 points and I only got 150, so I expect to get, uh, you know, not met in that area. Or our goal for the year was to um, ensure that all the accounts were updated with, where the passports had expired, and we have five left, but we had 1,000, so we did 95%. So, you know, I should meet in that area, okay? Um, right, and so at the end, like I said, so the personal observation, the statistical report against, you know, most organizations have that um, printer that spits out reports to tell you exactly, you know, where you are at or what, what needs to be done or how, close or far away you are from a group. And what, you, um, what would you measure? Um, and the book talks about, suppose you're a supervisor in the information systems department of a large hospital. You expect your office staff to be at work at 8 a.m. Every morning, precisely at 8 a.m., you walk around the office to make sure everyone is in. What typically you find are purses and lunch bags on desks, open briefcase, coats, bags, and chairs, and other physical evidence that your employees have arrived but most of them are down in the cafeteria having coffee. The employees make sure that they are at the office by 8 a.m. because you have communicated that, but, it's in, but that is an important control criterion. However, being in does not mean that they are actually working. And what I've seen over the years is a common problem, again, amongst the older staff. Some of them come in at 6 a.m. and they stay till 6 p.m. At 6 a.m., they come in and they sit in the break room until 9 o'clock. But because they are there from 6 a.m., they think that they have made some contribution. They have not. 
Then if you come in at 6 a.m., you would have woken up at least 4 or 35 o'clock to get there from 6 a.m. And so by 2 o'clock, you look at their desk, and they sitting up to their desk sleep. Anybody ever had that experience? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so they give you quality, they give you quantity time instead of quality time, right? So the quality time with me, and when they came at 6 a.m., they started working at 6 a.m., right? And they stayed up until 5. But no, they sleep halfway through the day. So a lot of persons, like I said, in the, the older people look at, oh, this bullet is coming from 6 a.m. and she stays at 6 p.m. Or they even try, oh, I come in from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Have you really been productive? Have you really done any work? Or what do you do? And then I was in a department where these ladies stay till 10 o'clock in the night, but they didn't do work. They stay till no, 10 o'clock really in the night talking because they were friends. Sorry, Cobra, you said something? No, I say that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they said 10 o'clock in the night because um, um, they were friends. So you want to, if you're supervising, you want to make the proper judgments. You don't want to say, Miss Bullet's sitting up here from, or Miss Bullet's here from 7 to 7 every day. She is because we're no she is. Okay, because Miss Bullet don't wait till 9. Okay, so you want to pay close attention, and that's why you're walking around and you're checking to make sure that uh, people are doing what they are actually supposed to do. And they're being productive and they're giving you quality time versus quantity time, okay? And so after you would have made all those checks and balances and we are towards the end of the year um, or even before the end of the year um, and you need, you feel like some action needs to be taken, the things are not going the way it's supposed to, people are not showing up to work on time or they are highly showing up to work but not working. You know, you can't see, you know, everybody is still behind, and productivity is low, then you may have to take some corrective action. And the book said there are two distinct types of corrective action. One is immediate and deals predominantly with symptoms. The other is basic and delves into the causes. Immediate corrective action is often described as putting out fires. It adjusts something right now and gets things back on track. Basic corrective action gets to the source of the deviation and seeks to adjust the difference permanently. Ms. Bullet um, asked already to, to, to um, have a lunch hour at three o'clock so she could pick up her kids to school, but every day she reached in back. And so immediately when she reached back, I stand and told Ms. Bullet, it's 4.30, it's not four o'clock, you took extra time. And then she explains, well, the traffic and it's downtown and the parking is very difficult, but I still have to, to, to pick up my kids from school is there you know a way to make a concession you know um so there are various different things that could, could cause or immediate corrective action sometimes people found out that they are stealing i remember it was in the middle of the day when i found out you know the blind guy had come in and a lot of people who used to sign X and or a lot of money was missing off of their um account and it was my best seller, my employee of the year, who was a good friend of mine who was actually stealing and she had stolen $80,000 from a blind guy. And I remember that was in the middle of the day and she was on the teller line when we finally found out it was her. And I sat to my desk and I cried because I had to fire her. And I, I was so sad, I could not believe that she did that to our customers. And for months, she was with us looking through the entries, trying to find out exactly where the blind man money going all the time mm -hmm. on our account. Cool. Okay, so yeah, it, it's, she a, will. She will. it's the closest people to you. Yeah, she could kill. She could kill. Yep, yep, yep. She could. Wow. Miss Fuller, Miss Fuller, yeah. how long ago did this happen? See, we just got the teeth in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was this was back in I would say 2011 or 12. She yeah, get away then. Because if Sorry? that happens, she get away. If that happens today, you ain't just getting fired. You getting a chance. They yeah, hit you. Well, 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 see, all our laws change. See, the banks didn't really prosecute you back then That's because mm -hmm. it was more reputational risk. So they would just take you to court, charge you, and never show back up. But now there are 21 crimes on the money laundering. And so you don't oh. only get charged with stealing by reason of employment, you get charged with money laundering. And so they can't drop that charge. And so I don't know, you know, and we don't have a lot of people on our books that were charged with money laundering. So I don't know 
if they're going to be able to protect themselves against reputational risk any longer. Uh, okay. So that, that's, that's where they focus on the uh, financial transaction reporting act, right? All of that comes yes. from the poker, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Yeah. And so things are going to change a little bit because um, um, while Royal Bank may not show up to court, they expect the attorney general to still prosecute that person on, on money laundering. But like they say, the, the reputational risk costs being more than the, the little seventy eight thousand dollars that um, this person steals. So they, so a lot of people just got away over the years with stealing. Okay, oh. so effective supervisors recognize that they must find time to analyze deviations, and in situations where the the benefits justify such action, permanently correct significant differences between standard and actual performance. So, of course, we out of fire today. Um, something may have happened, but did we really find out what the root cause is or we just happy things are back to normal until it, it, it goes a little deeper? Um, I used to have a teller who was a perfectionist and he just had me, you know, he reported me to head office and fully just is not like me. So he was a perfectionist and he, he balanced a zero every day. And to me, it was impossible, you know. Not that I didn't support him, but if you move in, you know, plug in figures and you move in, I, if you move 10 cents to me, you, you steal it, okay? And you move in 10 cents to, to falsely say that you are perfect, you are not. And so, you know, we we normally hit heads over that. And, you know, they, he used to just say, Miss Bullet, you know, um, hating against me. So one day he had a 250 um, dollar difference, which had to be investigated because we normally didn't investigate anything. I think I guess under a hundred dollars. And in a week or so, he said that he had found out where the difference came from. Um, he had uh, uh, the lady that lived through his corner who has a convenience store had made um, um, given him a deposit or come to the side and ask him to cash a check or something. To that extent, that's why he had the difference. And here it is, two weeks later, on our payday, he chills up with $250 to say he balances her again. I say garbage. You know, it was just foolishness. And so, you know, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes you had to dig deeper. So again, they moved him. You know, they said, okay, Miss Bullet, you just don't like him because of this reason or that reason. We are going to give him another chance and move him to another branch. I said, right. mm. everybody deserves another chance. He went to that next branch in six months. He was fired for even more than eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay. You all do it big, but you all do it halfway. He couldn't get away with it to my branch, so he he went somewhere else, and he, he got wow. away with it six months. He went to jail for something. He ain't away. He ain't for no, he went there. He was working that line. It's called the line that hired him right away. Okay. So That's somebody you know. Somebody the there yeah. <laughs> so the control process again. Um, you put all these plans in place. You have all these goals. You want to test them. You want to make sure that they are effective. You want to make sure they work. And in some cases, if they don't work, you find out um why they are not working. You find out the root causes. Um, you put um controls in place, or you send persons to training. Perhaps these people are not trained. Or, or they, you know, it's a new product or service. They don't understand how the works. They don't understand the risk. So you train them on that. Or um, sometimes people steal or, or they just don't do what they're supposed to do or they don't meet the target and, and there are repercussions. Now, in my whole 16 years at Royal, that was the first time I saw that account managers were let go because they did not meet the target. And, you know, that, that, that shocked everybody, you know? So... Again, it, it just depends. So, you know, there's always two sides of a story, and there are different um, or courses, of, uh, courses of action that you take, you know, the, depending on um, what actually happened. Like at that point, like I said, everybody was sure that they were actually let go, that they weren't given a second chance. But, you know, um, the manager said, listen, we were on them every three months saying, listen, you have to meet this. Or we don't have that means we don't have the business to have this number of persons in our um, accounts department, and so yeah, some of you will have to go home. Okay, um, then it goes on to talk about costs, and again, 
um, on everybody's mandate. It should be uh, cost effective. The, one of the goals for the department should be how do we save money? Because how do we save money when I was at Royal Bank meant that the more money we save, the more bonus we got. That's how it worked. And I know in a lot of institutions, you may save this money and you still don't get no uh, bonus. And so people just don't care. So normally it is more effective or people are more motivated to keep costs down when it is beneficial to them. And so ways to keep costs down, um, again, be, make sure that you get quant, quali, quality work, not quantity work, and people are productive during the day so you don't have to pay so much overtime. Um, the lights at night, I don't know if you all don't pay BEC or BPL, but electricity cost is very, very high. And you drive past by and send a night and see every single light on. I don't understand why that happens, but we were able to save, um, I think it was 27% year over year by just turning off our lights at night. Okay, and putting our air condition on auto so it would cut off in the nights. So that 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 helped us with, with with you know our energy costs. And again, we did see that go into our bonuses. Um, another thing that I did, you know, I, I was in charge of in the inventory, and I saw that the same IT guy who I said hated my guts, he used to deal with inventory just for inks and computers and, and what have you. And then they said, from the bullet, um, we want to centralize it and we want you to be in charge of everything. Um, with inventory. So immediately when I looked, we were spending like $30,000 um, a quarter on ink. And I said, really? This is crazy. And so what I did is I had my staff go around to everybody's um, printer. Of course, I turned off the color right away because all of us who was making our church booklet and, you know, all the different flyers and stuff for these various civic organizations that be in, I had to minimize that, right? I had to put the color print in my office. So if you want to print the church booklet, you had to at least let me know you're printing the church booklet, right? So I turn off the color print. <laughs> you all the don't right. act like you all don't know what Miss Bullet talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know what that. Yeah, and, and do, do them fancy homeworks with all the color for our children so they could get an A. I wouldn't talk with them, sir. But anyway, yeah, so I turn off the colored ink and immediately I got that down from 30000 to 25000 and then what I did is I had my staff go around and label each printer and the cost of the ink. And so we had it on paper and we get to analyze where we were spending the money. And lo and behold, on the receptionist desk where she printed for 800 customer statements every month, she had one of the most expensive inks. So I was able to switch out her computer and her printer and we saved $10,000 just switching out half printer and a computer because everybody else who needed something print sent it to reception or she, and she printed statements and statements and statements for 800 customers every month. So we were able to, you know, save the bulk of the money there. Um, because just switching out that printer. So once you have, like, if you, again, create a report and analyze and see where the money is being spent, you would be surprised how you could save money. And then some ladies, they say they are going to start a garden club. And I said, really? Put the garden club like to go around and water these plants? Because we spent an arm and a leg for, for palms, plants. I sorry to take away jobs from me. I, I was wrong for that one. But I led the garden club, you know, um, um, be responsible to water all the plants. So we eliminated that cost. So there's a lot of, of different things um, that you can cut back on and you'll be very surprised. And when I took over inventory, when I went into the inventory room, you know, we used to pay Frank Hanna to come and clean. And in his cleaning, he brought all, everything, all the bleach and Ajax and what have you. So why did we have bleach, Ajax, vinegar, cases and cases of stuff and we were ordering this, not from, the cheapest place, but from um, the tea place. What the tea place mean? Exactly. Anybody know? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. 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 So where I would pay oh, for a big gallon of Joy eight ninety nine, they were paying twenty five dollars for executive. The case of toilet tissue, I don't know why. I used to buy all the tissue, but they were 
paying, um, exactly, I used to pay $35 a case. They was paying $88 a case. So I was able to cut all of that down. I cleaned out the entire inventory room. I, I was able to cut all of that down, um, adjust on price. There's certain things you don't get from executives other than God because they had doubled the That's price. Right. So, right. and then I started to call up John, but I said, listen, John, but we ought to pay for so many um, packs of paper. Can we not have a discount? So I decided, I started negotiation, negotiating prices and they gave us discounts. And then they simply said, Ms. Bullard, if you buy 50 cases of paper, you will get it at the cheapest rate. And I said, but I don't have any to keep 50 um, cases of paper. They said, well, we'll keep it for you and deliver the amount that you need. And I said, really? And so then I started buying 50 cases of paper. And by the end of that year, listen, I, I, I got one bonus out of this world for the amount of money that I was able to save, just cutting back on, you know, and so I didn't cut anybody's salary. You know, I didn't fool the overtime, but just this, I was surprised that, you know, even a brand of water, you know, I could be able to say buy the book. And I was able to save must say like five, six dollars a month just buying the coupon book and paying with the coupons rather than paying a check. You know, so there are various ways. So look around your organizations and hopefully once you save all this money, either they will give you a reward or they will um you know, it'll affect the the, the bottom line. Okay. And, and you will get good bonuses, hopefully on a on a raise. Okay, so an employee um employee on 153 employee month theft is increasing. Is this true? The other day, about two years ago, you know, Atlanta had taken somebody to court because they had toilet tissue. They caught them stealing toilet tissue. And of course, I don't know if any of you ever would have worked at Atlanta, but when you go in, they check your bag, and when you come out, they check your bag. Okay? Two rules. And, and, two rules. Sorry? It was on the news. It was on the news. Two rules. Yeah, it was on the news. Up. Right. Yeah, so the question is, people said, oh my God, that was Atlanta. But Atlanta, it was the principal. And that was only one of the persons who they had brought before the courts. I used to do auditing at Atlanta. And let me tell you, we had people that strapped meat to them. We had like 60, 70 year old women with meat strapped to their body and they walking out and they bleeding. And people like, what this elderly woman, is she dying? No, when you look, she had meat strapped up. So there were millions and millions of cases of where, um, you know, persons had stolen and, and they said, look, the only way for us to, to curve this is to bring the persons before a court, okay? And so I just want to talk about, you know, us bringing home the staple law, because I look at that Royal Bank staple law right here on my desk. No, I just joke in. I, I walked the Royal Bank for four years. Wow. <laughs> no, wow. this way, gotta... it's going to buy this staple law. <laughs> I just joke, but that's what happens. We take all the pens, we take the paper clips, we take um, um, the staple up. Don't let our child have a project. We, we, we have a printer at home. We bring in a pack of paper. And then I had persons ordering ink. And like I said, at Royal Bank, we didn't pay for cleaning um, the cleaning supplies. Frank Connor did that. So why did we have a storage room full of vinegar and polish and bleach cases and cases of bleaching cases of joy? And, and paying $25. And at least you could have gone down to Super Value and pay $8.99. No, you pay $25 for one joy from executive and we don't even need it. So no. stop no. it up. And a lot of people are, are doing it. They think that I could just take this joy. I could just take this bleach. I could just take this hand towel, this toilet paper and, and bring it home. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Yes, okay, yes. stop it. It it does it, 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 it's it's stealing. Okay, because if all of us decide that we could bring home a staple up, that affects the bottom line. If every day we bring home the pants, we have to continuously buy pants. Okay, so employee staff and if people think that it's no big deal, if you take a whole pack of paper home or, or the manila folders because you want to open up your office at home, no, all of that is stealing. But, but people don't seem to realize that. If you take in the toilet tissue, that's just stealing. Okay, and, and I'm sorry, but vehemence are known for stealing. It's a very big problem that many organizations have. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think Tiff and everywhere. Yeah, but we gotta stop. We yeah. gotta stop. 
the institution paper does not belong to us because we have a home office. I think the issue is we don't, um, Bahamians don't think, because I don't have Bahamians, I don't think they think they steal, they defend. I think that's the first mm -hmm. issue. He ain't paying me all my money, so I take it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> that's yeah. true, Yeah. You robbed me last month. You robbed me last month, so I can take this scissors. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is, it is defend, but I just don't think in their minds. Right. All right. Right. Yeah, like right. they think, like you say, okay, well, I, I need this paper. You all have plenty of paper, yeah? With the right. Or, or they say, he ain't pay me what he's supposed to pay me. Thief from thief, may God smile. Oh, no, it's wrong. So stop <laughs> it. And please um, <laughs> encourage your class. I mean, your staff. <laughs> this 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 stop it. 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 Stop um, and she used to say, if you want a pen, you have to bring out an empty pen. And we thought she was hard and cool, but after I started started having to buy pen, I don't know, I had a must be almost a thousand dollars worth of pens a month. We had to buy for the, for, for forty people. I said, no, a thousand dollars worth of pens. Uh, no, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 Miss Miss Fuller, just as you have that, you have other extremes too, because I've heard of a situation. You know the machine tape that you use in your calculator? Mm -hmm. Right. Persons were encouraging individuals to use the reverse side <laughs> of the tape, right? Oh my God. I'm it's like, to do what? Use it. Okay, you know, you print out on the, the numbers on one side when you're doing your calculations. <laughs> right. Then they want it after you finish the whole rule, they want you to roll that up and use the reverse side. <laughs> you have like, to be kidding me. <laughs> I did. You what if it was a cost saving initiative and they would give you a bonus? Would you not do it, Kendrick? Let's pull it. No. no. Now, come on now. It's a lie. No, no. 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 But where I, I say go in, where I take go in, I can already calculate. It's supposed to go put it. in the garbage. No, no, no. I'll tell them take that same reverse sign and wipe the you know what for that. Hey, hey, you didn't go. Where you didn't anyway, go. Anyway, you all because you try to, to save people money and do not the, the paper and all these things, they do not belong to you. It's not yours. Take the, the people things back to you. That's a part yeah. of our culture. Yeah, but it has to change because exactly. it's, it's stealing. Yeah. And then we want to have an outcry when people go in, uh, before the cost the toilet paper. Pirates, pirates, well, we pirates, don't have, we don't yes, have... and bootleg, yeah, yes, no, it's bullets, it's bullets, lock in, run it, lock in, run it, we wouldn't have the steal, we wouldn't have the steal, we used to get pay, right? Fuck. Yeah, but this is why, that's, that's you, why. You, that's Yuri, why. Yuri, uh, we are at this point right now, that you have to leave before you serve, and when you come, become the leader, you put all these things in place, so this is why I'm encouraging you to not just check the box in this class, but actually learn and go on further. So we are the future leaders. We are being educated. You serve, we know serve better. You yeah, serve okay. before you lead. And when you get there, remember the changes that you promised or that need to make or affected you when you was at the bottom. Ms. Bullock, you look, you need to teach them politicians. Yeah. No, 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 no. Exactly. Right. 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 I started over, I teaching y'all because yeah, y'all are the future leaders of this you. country. I, I, I don't give a fuck on them. They too old and set in their ways. <laughs> They're too old. We raising up, yeah, we raising up a new set of people who, who are ethical and who, who know the difference between right and wrong. <coughs> you have to go to the primary school. Well, uh, yes. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Because, Miss <laughs> Miss Ms. Willard, you need to speak to some people who are in upper management because some teething is beginning on there too. Agreed. I just, I just, and aside from the top, fishes, fishes stink from where? The head. The head, so, right. I agree. Yeah. Right, so, so we need to change the culture. We need to <laughs> A lot of us just think it's okay. You know, it's not okay. <laughs> you so know you what just, they just call it? Entertaining potential clients. <laughs> but you will that's true. spending three, four hundred dollars on lunch and like that's exactly yeah. what you want it. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, especially in them offshore banks, they <laughs> you don't need to put to be going to lunch when you have a client. But every day they go to lunch on the on the company card. Potential clients. Every day. Really? <laughs> every day. A yep. potential Swipe. client. Potential yep. client, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't talk I about the living, the living expense and the school fees and the, you know, what? I had one CEO that wanted us to pay for his pampas and he reported me to head office. I said, baby pampa. I said, no, I don't care who he is. 
We mm-hmm. we didn't he we already paying living and we giving him a stipend and he getting school fees so he want pampers too. No way. The problem is the the problem is that he felt like he was entitled to that. That's the first problem. Is. Yes, he is entitled to that if he came so from poor in the wood. Right based on. on what? What made him entitled to that? You all be right down this toiletries. Exactly. Not right down, down to the, the car no, clean. No, he didn't in the that. world. He was gonna. He only lasted one year. One year. Because <laughs> he, he was. Go back the way he come I don't know every, where he came from. Every living that life. Yeah, every expense that he put in, I had to send back. He he mean one year. He he made it. Cause he he was overdoing. Every time he went to Super Value, it's like, oh my god, this is so expensive. I can't. And he buying caviar and all kind of foolishness. No way. That's what I used to. That's no. what I used to. But, but, but not, I no. Not, no. I can't trust no. Nina. You know. No, 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 no Miss Bullet. Um, um, it might sound like a joke, but it depends on the way I'm used to living. If I, yes. if but, but if I only, like, no, listen seriously, to me. if listen, I, listen, I can't no, go Ms. from caviar to sardine. It's not even like it. Caviar, sardine, sardine. 90% of the time, 90% of the time, you say Xbox. Who come here? They don't be living don't. like how they was before. Trust yeah, me. but but even so, if they was living like that, it's not at the bank's expense. Okay, oh, I I have right. all the contracts, and I know that you entitled to, and that's and why the expense she comes before me, and I look at that in detail, because you will not be buying caviar on the bank's expense. Okay, but you Ms. already Bullet, have all your potential living. lunches that you going out for. You going out for all those potential lunches. That's all you get. You ain't going in super value and fresh market and and. I'm buying all this foolishness. And but I why? Because the to pay for. No. Your, your price is expensive contract. in the Bahamas, you know. Your price is over here ridiculous. Yeah, but to that's price. okay. It, you didn't negotiate that in your contract. The bank is not <laughs> going to pay for that. I'm sorry. And that's listen, true. I had some things I had to pay for because the people used to say, you know, they was from Life Aki. We had a couple of people who worked with us who was from Life Aki. And they said, cream, you can't give our clients cream. We need 100% goat's milk. Exactly. So every time we had a client, one, what, every time we had a, a client, we had to go out and buy 100% goat's milk because we only used to have a client like once a week or once every two weeks. And that you know, goat milk used to spoil in like two or three days. Oh, you, yes, can't, you can't expect... You can't expect mm-hmm. the clients to be drinking what? a carnation creaming. Carnation oh. in Alaska. Well, what about oh, the, uh, the, 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 oh, the God, no. milk? God, no, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they I, used to be insulted. So <laughs> I used to go, I used to send, I used to send my secretary out to go and buy the goat's milk. I didn't have a problem with that. I understood that, but that wasn't that was for the clients. Miss Miss Bullard, it was a client, simple way. Charge fees that. for that goat's milk, not it was the a simple way. I'll throw the goat milk out and go buy some distinction or cardinal cream and pour that in there. Good to go. Good to go. <laughs> Tell them like to give people they was extra. They was extra, extra. Yeah, no, no difference. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's it's eight, it's seven fifty one. It ain't eight o'clock yet, Misha. I'm trying every week. I guess on the last week I I, I finally yeah. make you happy. <laughs> Finally, okay. So again, the for chapter six, that's it. Um, the control process, the teething, and the cutting mm-hmm. costs. Okay, so make sure you go back to your institutions and look around and and make us some suggestions. Like I say, we should save like ten thousand dollars just on moving that printer and 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 getting a printer with more economical link. You know, so there's a lot of ways to cut back. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so okay. next week we're almost there. Whoopee! We're almost there. Okay, so um, I guess unwind and relax and then um, be ready for next week, Tuesday, and then the week after we'll do our presentations and then just have a review and, and, and that'll be it. Okay, any, any more questions or concerns? Uh, j- just put an emphasis on those particular three areas that you've covered basically tonight, right? Uh, TFIN and control, the control process. Okay, you say just put an emphasis on what? Those particular three. Yeah, because that, that's what you would be tested on, those are three areas. The control process, stealing and cost effective um, initiatives. But we'll go through everything in the review. 
Okay. Okay. So no worries yet. Thanks. Okay. So if no more questions. Everybody have a good evening, and and we'll see each other again next week. And everybody has their portions for um, chapters two and seven. Again, if you can't make it for any reason, please just send me an email and let me know. Please do not just not show up when it's your turn to speak. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Great. Okay. 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 Have a great week. Bye. Good night. Good night, all. Okay.